Disciple Development Series. Uh, this is lesson number five of the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. We're looking at the contrast between the fruit of the Spirit and the works of the flesh. And I sincerely pray that these lessons have been helpful to you, that they've strengthened you, that they've guided you, and helped you to develop into the Christian that God is looking for. Now, in just a short time, the Galatians have begun to leave the doctrine taught by Paul. Even though they had, they had good teaching, they had yielded to bad uh, actions, and the bad teaching had begun to control them. They had begun to be controlled by the flesh. Now, in this section of the letter, Paul warns them about following the flesh instead of the spirit. As we look at verse 19 of Galatians chapter 5, we read, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, before we go into the inheritance, I want to just recap these manifestations of the works of the flesh. Uh, the works of the flesh come really in three groups that Paul is describing. Sexual works of the flesh, religious works of the flesh, and interrelational sins. The sexual works of the flesh include adultery, married person who has sex with someone other than their mate. And I think it's very important for us to understand the meaning of these words and not just to know the words. There are very many words in the Bible that we know, that we can pronounce, that we can quote, but are not comfortable or familiar with the meaning. Um, fornication, sexual intercourse between unmarried people. These are against the laws of God. Uncleanness. Uncleanness in this context refers to an unnatural practice, self-abuse, sexual acts common among the heathens. And no doubt the Galatians who read this letter or heard this letter would be familiar with what Paul was referring. Lasciviousness. Not a word commonly used in the 21st century. It means unchaste behavior. Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 states, For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, railings. These are the things which defile the man. And we haven't even gone through our list yet, but we see that Jesus mentions adultery and fornication just as Paul did to the Galatians. The manifestations of the flesh in religious works, idolatry, worship of idols, and covetousness. 
Look at what Paul writes in Colossians 3, verse number 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, we just read those. Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, or lust, or longing for what is forbidden. That's what that word means. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Anytime you place something before God, it can fall into the class of idolatry. Also witchcraft, the use of magical enchantments. We know that these things are false and taught by false teachers. And Paul says, these are works of the flesh. Hatred, qualities that make enemies and ill will. These fall under the interrelational works of the flesh. Hatred one against the other. Variance. Any quarrel or uh, by implication wrangling and contention and debate and strife. Jealousies is what emulations means. Ambitious or envious rivalry. Wrath. Eruptions of anger. Strife. Acts of contention, fights, and arguments. He mentions seditions and heresies, which is divisions, the effect on the community when strife is present. And we, we've seen it. Fleshly behavior can cause us to divide into camps, divide into factions, and this group against that group. And this group doesn't like that group. And if you're going to be with us, you can't like them. And things of this nature. Envying. Pain felt at the sight of excellence or happiness of others. To me, that, that's, that's the most insidious kind because it, it, it tries to stay under the surface. But we know that envy does not travel alone. It brings with it its own crew of works of the flesh, murders, the illegal taking of another's life. We're not talking about fighting in a war. We're not talking about fighting to defend yourself. We're talking about illegally taking someone else's life. Drunkenness, partaking to the excess of alcohol, revelings, Excessive or boisterous festivities, carousals, taking part or enjoying something without restraint. Paul says this kind of wild behavior is a manifestation of the works of the flesh. And then he says something extremely interesting to me. And he says, and the such like, things that are like these things. I'm not going to give you a fully comprehensive list. But things that are like that, things that are brought on by our fleshly appetites, they are, they are a product of a carnal mind, and they're not conducive to Christ-like living. Whenever we're engaged in an activity that, that we may have to pause and wonder, would Jesus ever partake of this? Would Jesus ever perform this, this way? Would Jesus ever be involved in this type of activity, we might need to pause for a moment and see if it's not one of the works of the flesh. All these are products of being led by the flesh. Look at what Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temper and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence, second time he mentioned diligence, to make your calling and election sure, 
For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we're led by the Spirit, we will watch <clears throat> for those traits and actions and any like them in our own lives. It's not sufficient for us to see it in others' lives, but we must take examination of our own lives to see if we are not being led by the flesh. Paul says, if you do these things, you're being led by the flesh. Look at what he says to the Roman church. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in righteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Paul is talking about how man related to God. They should have seen by the things that were made, the power that he had, but they thought they were so smart. And they began to manifest God in images of birds and beasts and man and, and things of that nature. Look at what happened. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. We know God is a jealous God, and only he is to be worshipped. But man drifted away, led by the flesh. And, the, and Paul said, so God gave them up. This is what you want to do? Go right ahead. You're worshipping creatures instead of the creator. Look at verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Paul is saying, again, God gave them up to the desires of their flesh, when you are led by the flesh, when you are controlled by the flesh, you are on the other side of God's desire. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Look at that. The third time Paul writes that God gave them up. In other words, he's not going to make you do anything. If you want to go ahead and be led by the flesh, he's going to give you over to the desires of your flesh. Being filled with all unrighteousness, which are things that are not right in the eyes of God. Fornication, illicit sex with someone not your spouse. Wickedness which is unrestrained indulgence in evil deeds, <clears throat> covetousness, the intense desire to have what belongs to someone else, not, what's, not one like it, but theirs, maliciousness, deep-seated hatred that takes pleasure in the injury of others, full of envy, which is hatred of someone for what they have acquired or achieved or they can do, 
murder, the unlawful taking of another life, debate, contentious dis discord or arguing, deceit, which is lying and false representation, malignity, the state which is the state of mind that causes one to put the worst spin on every action, ascribing low motives for good deeds. Whisperers, those who blacken the name and characters of others slyly by hints and innuendos. Paul is saying these things are works of the flesh. Look at what he said. Uh, verse 30, backbiters, openly speaking ill of those not present. Haters of God, despiteful or full of contempt and disrespect. Proud unreasonable, high esteem, boasters, vainglorious about themselves and their possessions. You've seen it. Inventors of evil things. This is the one that really always, always gets my attention. Those for whom the present evil is not enough. It's not, it's not enough that there's already enough evil in the world. There are some who just make up things. It Disobedient to parents, refusing to honor that father and thy mother without understanding which means they're not perceiving spiritual things, not, not, not earthly understanding, spiritual understanding. Covenant breakers, a person with no scruples that breaks covenants and contracts without natural, natural affection. This word is generally thought to refer to the love of parents to children. We naturally love our parents. We naturally love our children. But Paul said there are those who don't have that natural affection. The implacable, which means those who will not be reconciled or pursue the offender with unyielding revenge. Unmerciful, those without compassion. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them Worthy of death. Death being a separation from God eternally. Church, when we were baptized, we were justified, which means we were judged innocent, even though we weren't innocent. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. When we were baptized, we were sanctified, separated from the world for the Lord. We came out from among them and decided that we were going to change our lives and live a life pleasing to God. However, we're always in danger of being drawn back into the world. I wish I had an amen in here somewhere. We're always in danger. It does not matter if you live godly for the last 40 years in a row, you are always in danger of the flesh causing you to be drawn back into the world. Look at what Paul writes to the Hebrews in chapter 10. We saw that. 10 verse 38 and 39. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And we remember in our study of the giants of faith that Paul is making reference to his Hebrew brethren being drawn back into the control of the law of Moses. But we know that the, the thing that draws us, the thing that entices us, the danger that we face is not the law of Moses. It's the ways of the world and being led by the flesh. When we were baptized, we were saved. Saved from our past sins. And so now we're being further sanctified for the service of the Lord. We are being changed from the person that we were. And those who didn't love are learning to love. Those who chose not to forgive are beginning 
to forgive and etc. We're beginning to be led by the flesh, the spirit. But if you don't, you can lose your inheritance. What's the inheritance? It's our home in glory. We have it. It's been promised to us, but we have not yet received it. That's what Paul is making reference to in verse 21 of chapter 5. When he writes, of that which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so we need to be, be mindful of the power of the flesh. We can't just ignore it because this, the flesh is powerful and it will entice you. It will well up in you. It will cause you to act in an unchristlike manner. And we don't want to do that because we don't want to lose our inheritance. Join us next week as we continue in our study. Prayerfully you are being strengthened by this word. Prayerfully you are growing in Christ Jesus. And while we are apart, while we are separated, while we are prohibited from having the type of the fellowship and, and, and communicating with each other as we once did. We need to make sure that we keep God's word foremost in our lives and follow the fruit of the spirit and not the works of the flesh. Until next week, we pray continually that you will be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. Show, show me, show me the way.